Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old Blues A to Z version 2 of the Aborg Junta. So when I started the A to Z series, um, I played as Aborg Junta pretty early on and they had a generic focus tree. But now with a 5.0 update, Ashes to Embers, we actually have a unique focus tree. But here we are, Arborg, and we've got Viscount O'Brien, which we'll read in a little bit. He's a cruel tyrant, but we've got a unique focus tree and a lucky break. O'Brien was no ordinary mercenary, after all. How many mercenaries get this kind of opportunity? Versus, and then unacceptable dream of royalty. As the dominoes began to fall in Manitoba, some saw, not collapse, but opportunity. Shooting my shot. The mercenary life is a hard one. Most people view you as a raider with a contract and treat you just as well. All it takes is one bad contract to leave you face down in the dirt and snow, but if you're tough enough, skilled enough, and lucky enough, you, make it, you can make it big. My shot came when a few contracts came for calling for poor saps who knew how to shoot a gun and follow orders. I didn't ask too many questions, always a risk in doing so, but I had a good luck over who was calling before I made my choice. Oh, and boy, I was glad I did. The Kingdom had a group of calls. The Kingdom needed some help pacifying some wasteland. What a great hunting season. That ice lord queen had was a nice trophy. Ooh. Here's some legitimacy. A privately funded expedition to the north. Our caravan needed some guides to help protect their travel north, but took quite a few of the raiders a trip, including their camp, more war sport, and mercenaries of the frozen north, which is kind of cool. Some dodge a pre-war group or something. This one was kind of sketchy. Some trip to a pre-war bunker, but it paid well, and I saved the group from some from some sentry bots. Hmm. So basically, for this campaign, I mean, with our junta, I want to become an uh, independent monarchy. Until you're restored at the eastern marshes, I do not want to become a puppet. Servants of the crown. Hmm. Nah. Nah. Assert independence from the monarchy. I want to be independent. I want to distance ourselves. Large amount of leg legitimacy, huh? We become elites eventually. Um, independence threatened. Instead of revolt, I would like to go down this route for this campaign. Mm, so right now we have this legitimacy factor too. The balance power is currently stable with moderate legitimacy. If we go this way, you get more political power with extremely low legitimacy. But if we go this way, extremely high, you lose political power, which is also not very good. Well, I like stability too, so let's go with that one. Harsh reality: luck can't last forever. Very true. Not even one political power day. Great. For kings and caps. Uh, for after that success, my reputation really blew up. I had people from all over hiring me for jobs of security soon. I had enough caps for my own group and we became the best around. Nobody else could match us in quality, training, or skill, and yet, it was all thanks to me. My hard work and my skill. But people ch still treated us like dirt, and it pissed me off badly. So much so that when the kingdom came calling for a mercenary band to help in its war against the rebelling republic, I saw an opportunity to change that. Success would mean that I, finally... What are the respect of the Manitoban people? Ooh, dreams of respect. A lot more political power and recruitable population factor. Or would have a new base in the north to show the Westerners who we are. Dreams of power. Better just for war goals times. Um, that's not bad. I gotta go with the political power. We want respect. Supply problems. Cut off from their benefactors with hostile forces clamoring for their destruction. It's no wonder that the Arborg feels the squeeze. Up crap creep. Up crap creek with no paddle. Gosh darn it. How the heck did I screw this up? They cut us off. From our allies began picking us off. I should have seen this was, this was going to happen. I've dealt with it a million bloody times. I've lost almost everyone, and all I've got to sh with me now are a handful of soldiers and some irregulars and stupid farmers who can barely shoot. Now that I made it up north, we should be able to hold, hold out until help can come and get us out of here. How the heck did I blow up this stupid job? Delegation of Manitoba. Gain a small amount of legitimacy. Like more decisions to increase and utilize our legitimacy. Social mobility. I like that political power. Uh, what else? Cover up more, even more political power. Soldiers of the Crown. Uh, what do we have here? Industry? What industry? Hmm. Um, inter interesting. What else we got around here? The war never ended. The continuous skirmishing with three rivers for loot and legitimacy. Uh, not just mercs anymore. Well, that'd be good. Um, let's go with this one first, maybe. Delegation of Manitoba. Our status as subjects of Manitoba is uncertain and shaky, and we have no idea how to stand with them. By sending a delegation to Manitoba, we can begin to negotiate for better equipment and discuss the future of our two nations. Out of hope, help, and heaven. The Arborg Junta is an army attempting to be a state. Filled with mercenaries, militias, and uneducated Manitoba loyalists, they can't sustain themselves with what they have, or what land they have. With the hostile three rivers to the south, the Junta scrapes by with imports from Manitoba over the often frozen water. If not for the iron hand of O'Brien keeping the military together as a threat, they surely have collapsed. Nevertheless, they have a job to do, and if they wish to reclaim the Republic for the crown, they need to rearm, reorganize, and resupply. For king, country, and revenge. Get some infantry equipment. Because of our situation, 
We're reliant on the Manitoba for shipments of supplies. While we might be able to build up our own arms industry in the future, for now we must use our legitimacy to request shipments from our benefactors. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. We have three, uh, five divisions here. Two are special forces, which are ACOM with, oh god. And these are anti-Republican forces. So, they look like doggos. But they're not really doggos, they're just infantry with recon. So, it is what it is. And a forcer. Yeah, sure, why not? That's pretty unique. What do we have here? Uh, pretty normal stuff. I like more political power. Firebrand in the north. Lil of Darkwall. Intellectuals. Elites. Experience diplomat. Personal community. Alright, and delegation to Manitoba. Um, and trying the new nobility. Manitoba is unlike many other countries in the wasteland. They have a nobility. By establishing our own nobility, we can prove ourselves as ideals of Manitoba and reward our loyal soldiers. There is no downsides to a nobility, right? Um, since we're here, faithful henchmen. Uh, that's not bad. Oh, that's changed. Daily compliance? That's less than what you usually get, I think. Political power, stability, and trade income. That's a little different from what it used to be. Um, I always like this one because it's political power, stability, passive caps income. I'm going to grab that one first, and then what do we have? Sir Avery. People and soldiers live and die, but it's us who write the legacy they will remember. Interesting. Jonathan Lane. Amos Wheeler. And Lemuel, Lemuel Breckenridge. Conventional warfare or normal warfare? Honestly, we're using a lot of infantry here. Um, we have four research slots, which is pretty nice. What do we have for tech level? So we're pretty mid on everything. Literally mid on everything but power armor. Uh, we're not start anywhere here. We're not going to go automated warfare. We're not going to go outside of warfare. Probably not asymmetric warfare. We are mercenaries, though. And mercenaries tell me that we should probably use wasteland tactics. Refined warfare. Well, army, plus 500% HP. Special forces, soft attack and heart attack. The legion. We could be a legion merc group. Flexibility command, refined warfare. Mm, flexibility command, principle. And that's for power armor, really, though. Uh, heavy special forces, because we, we will use light special forces. Purity, and being pure does not make a lot of sense to me, so. What if you use ancient tactics? The wasteland tactics make a lot of sense. It's a lot more HP for these guys. Um, more organization, you know what? Conventional? Well, we're not very conventional. Oh, well, mm. Asymmetric ancient tactics. We are monarchy, and that's kind of old school. You know, we're going to go asymmetric warfare for this one. Because we can. Conventional is nice and all, but why not? Something a little different. Um, cover up poor treatment. Some of our citizens have received subpar treatment. While a large portion of our populace are insurgents, many are just people who are living in the area and feel no special attachment to the monarchy. Some of the monarchists don't like that. We need to hide the truth about the man from this from Manitoba and project the image of a peaceful Rome. The Second Coalition. Eloy Steele, the Republic of Three Rivers, wishes to finally end the long-standing conflict between the King of Manitoba and the nations formerly under, under its control. To this end, they've called upon the peoples of Manitoba together to form a coalition, take down the King, and have it dubbed the Second Coalition, in the spirit of the original war for the First Republican Coalition. Who shall prevail this time? Interesting. <clears throat> Construction basics are good. Get a little more manpower, because we are absolutely going to need that. We're doing everything here, yes, pretty much for the most part. And eventually, uh, we want not just mercs anymore. Now that we're a country, we're going to have to adapt our mercenary ways. No longer can we simply fight as we've always fought, and there are insurgents we have to pick up some slack as well. So significant reforms are necessary if we begin be, become a fighting fit force. Yeah. Um, you know what? That's for land auction. We can wait for that one. Industry, what industry? Soldiers in Arbor give a saying. You're better off relying on enemy shipments than our own. That does not sound good for us. But that's the case. Organizational relations. Can we buy anything here? We have no caps. Do we have any money at all? None really yet. Need to go melee hacker. You fight the power. That's good. All right. What's next? So I always like getting more political power. Person in the community. I guess there's more trade income too that we could use. So yeah, why not? Get more PP. That'd be great. So Biscuit O'Brien. Can now having been ruthless. O'Brien rose from the ranks of have nothing, waste, and guns for hire to lead his own mercenary outfit by the age of 21. After an unbroken string of successes on the battlefields of northern Canada, he was approached by servants of the Manitoba Crown with an unresistible offer. Rally the fellow forces of monarchists and counter-revolutionaries fleeing the firm three rivers, turn the tide and crush the fledging republic. In return, he'll be granted the title of Viscount and control over the sizable stretch of land and rule as he sees fit under the auspices of the throne. He runs a junta in Arbor against his personal army, squeezing every last bit of cap and scrap from the settlements of the region to build his military forces and fund expeditions for pre-war tech. Self-assured in his victory, after the inevitable assault against Three Rivers, he'll secure a life of luxury and a place in his history books with one fell swoop. 
We got gold, man. We all need gold. Nice. Uh, so with that one, which will read Manitoba funding. Our broker receives reg regular payments from Manitoba to ensure their army's up to snuff and ready for the war. Too bad that they are accruing debt from this. Which gun will you use when they win? Hey, you gotta be a royal, alright. Just didn't specify the position you wanted. Supply problems. Our unprepared and disorganized retreat into the north had many consequences, but the biggest problems are lack of equipment. We're not equipped to act as an expedition, and a few trained artisans and mechanics joined us in the revolt. Due to this, we struggle to maintain adequate supply. However, our soldiers relish getting their hands on any enemy equipment they can. That's good. Uh, dreams of respect, of course, downtrodden and mistrusted his entire life. O'Brien longs to show the wasteland that he's worthy of respect, even if he has to kill them all to prove it. Makes sense to me. As we'll cover up our poor treatment. Don't ask about that. Uh, social immobility. Our mercs make up of the noble core of our government and represent the best society has to offer. We can't let any scruffy wander off the street just because, or just be, just becomes mad or something. A lopsided army. So our organization sucks. Infantry attack and defense sucks. Special forces attack and defense is very good though. Our army is a hodgepodge mix of highly trained mercs and untrained insurgents. While the mercenaries are highly trained and capable, the insurgents are for the most part simply civilians with guns. It's made our army lopsided with an incompetent army, but highly skilled shock troops. First steps haven't been taken forward towards solving this problem, though. So now we have high legitimacy. Are you sure Manitoba nobles? Huh. Offer training and support. Request infantry supplies. Massive shipment. Request reinforcements. We get 100, 100 manpower. That's not worth it. Oh, we have a boat, though. Will and Garnett. All right. Um, I want to begin a scavenging program, but we're going to buy our own guns first, maybe. Yeah. Make sure we got a good enough opinion with everybody here. Yeah, that's kind of what we have to do. We're going to cover up the poor treatment. Our place in this world? Oh, yeah. A band of mercs and insurgency are not exactly the typical building blocks of a successful kingdom. One must wonder, what is our place in the kingdom of Manitoba? What is that we can do to prove our worth to them? So what do we have around here? Poppy Dancer? Oh, that's different. Interesting. Is this gun being held together with mud? Look, O'Brien, with things um, as they are, uh, I'm surprised you guys managed this to last this long. Also, if you want to read about the David for me, please go ahead. I've read that several times, so. Lest we forget, Burn and Teller. Some people say honor is no place in the frozen wasteland of the far north. These people are the ones who became the raiders and rebels. And then Mark Green, Kevin Guard. Uh, that's pretty good. Frontline operative is very good, actually. Uh, who do we have here? Well, Jeffrey Wilcox, Henry Wilson. Hey, more defensive entrenchment. Word training's not bad. Crowd control, we'll use that one eventually. Um, cultural advisors, faithful henchmen. I like this one a lot. Eventually, we'll probably become elites. We're rulers right now. But we'll see what happens. I want to wait before we do make any commitment there. Uh, anything here I really care about? Not too much, in all honesty. Uh, passive caps income. That's actually been... That's different. Sometimes you get plus three, plus five. So, resource efficiency gain. Caps income is good. You know what? We could use more money anyways. Let's go and do that one. Oh, we can go to War of the Damned. The war never ended. Our war with the Three Rivers never ended. Sure, we may not be actively fighting anymore. And the Kingdom of Manitoba may have signed more peace treaties, but our borders are frequently filled with the sounds of gunshots and soldiers dying. The war has never stopped, and we can't either. Nice. Let's go ahead and begin the scavenging program. Because I would like to go to war fast. Yeah, we're working on our naval XP too, which is fantastic. Looks like we got a decent amount of guns. We need some more support equipment though. Uh, we're proficient mercenaries. Okay, interesting. That's good. Oh, we're also mercenary training instructors. That makes sense. Chief of the Air Force. Uh, the war never ended. Terror on the border. Uh, the soldiers of Three Rivers will learn to fear bumps in the night and weapon raids. Raids or weapons are in short supply here, but Three Rivers has plenty of garrisons nearby that can we that we can raid. If we attack with surprise and surround an encampment, we can minimize our casualties while maximizing our loot. Hmm. Nice. Another day, another stolen Republican weapon. I like it. Can we actually raid them? Forces are looking decent at best right now. Not great, but just decent. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um... I like the defense. We might need that maybe later on. I'm not really entirely sure. Outside volunteers. Major businesses. Well, we need some infantry equipment. Ballistics are okay. Melee weaponry. Fire teams, demos. Uh, we're probably not going to be using robots. Monthly population, medical t chem stuff. 
honestly, I might not, I might actually use docs. It lowers production costs for support equipment, more reliability, better monthly population. You know what? Stitching slab wounds, pulling teeth, amputating legs, removing that growth you don't want other people to know about. Doc does it all, which actually makes a lot of sense for us to use. And tear on the border. That'd be good. You better go and terrorize him. Be terrorizing somebody here. Oh, well, that just finally popped up. Okay, interesting. So September, we're working on that still. Uh, this is all ahead of time, which just sucks, but whatever. Get that glider. Also, we, we started off with 50 army XP already, which makes sense, because we're like a mercenary nation, so I already went with new crossroads. Um, I would like to expand our special forces pretty soon, too. Um, so I'll have a time. Grab that one, too. Nice. Um, yeah. Asymmetric warfare is going to be different for us. And then foraging. More recovery. Way more HP. Recruitable population factor. And less penalties for out of supply. Which is, I think, great. Wow, 80% already. Okay. That is killing our political power gain. Oh, initiate a raid against three ri rivers. Oh. By beginning a raid against a republic of three rivers, we can prove ourselves to Manitoba and then gain some loot as well. Threaten three rivers. Military expedition. I kind of want to see what that does. We have extremely high legitimacy. We are a very legitimate kingdom, nation here. Would we be able to win? I mean, they have, what do they have here? Just infantry. We have special forces, and they're only four. It's not great. Hmm. We could try it. You know what? Let's see what happens. I don't know. If our rates exceed their legitimacy, will go up dramatically. I want to see what happens. Are we missing anything here? No, we're actually really good on what we've got for now. Um, 100 is not bad. Chief of the Army, High Command. Um, since I don't know, we're going to go Flyboy, maybe? Expedition Departs. Had a few weeks of preparation, our expeditionary forces. Uh, the Western Dogs is ready to depart, and we won't hear back from them until they return. So that uh, all goes well, and they come back with some good new pay for their efforts. Good luck, you Wasteland Dogs. Oh. Wow. Well, I guess we'll see. The Red Sun over the north. Look at that. The block spires of smoke and flame can be seen all across the Arborg Republican border. The smell of death permeates the air downwind. The sun, normally a pale yellow, is now red through the ashen streams. A small number of survivors who managed to flee their burning homes quickly spread the news of what just happened, and with it, fear. Over the night, a raiding force of the Junta crossed the border unseen and began to sack every settlement they could find. Homes were burnt, people were slaughtered, and their remains were left to freeze on the cracked, frozen ground. Along the entire border arose an endless line of smoke and fire showing the wrath of the Junta. Word spread quickly come morning, and soon a wave of people began to flee the border region. Fearing for their lives, even those within the lands of the Junta began to vacate the area out of fear of Republican reprisals. Tensions are flaring, and soon open warfare may once again blight the north. Next stop, North End. Nice. Forge Blues. Forge Hold Blues. Damn the Damned. The Damned sit in the north, occupying some of the most impressive pre-war structures that the area has to offer. Structures that once belonged to the Kingdom of Manitoba. If we reclaim them, Manitoba will surely look favorably on us. Welcome to the most pleasant of lands. Oh, new job just came in for the Wasteland Dogs from the, from the Kingdom. This one's a doozy. Jobs head of the electorate and investigate rumors that the town of Pleasant Jobs has its hands on some powerful old world American tech. The Kingdom wants us to investigate these claims and, if possible, get our hands on some of it. Now, we gotta be extra careful here. The Kingdom doesn't want to start a conflict with Pleasantdale or the other electorals, especially since much of the Pleasantdale's population came from the Kingdom. Could be a good ally for us in the future. As long as we keep our heads straight, we should avoid any issue. Darn it, we're out of coffee. I hear Pleasant Dale is nice this time of year. Where there's hope, there's a way. Hopefully it goes well. Hoping it does. We do have six divisions here, which is good. How many caps we got? 22. Is that enough to buy anything? Because I want to continue to decrease the cost for this. It requires, I mean, we have a better cost of point, you know, point one two, but, you know, it is what it is. So the next one from the Gunrunners would be what? Uh, I can't tell. Still, basically 15, but still. Hey! Where there's hope, there's a way! Operation Pleasant Day, Commander Logs, entry number one. We arrived in Pleasantdale. Uh, our journey here was uneventful, just a few ferals and animals that tried their luck against a caravan. No raiders this time, probably saw our gear and backed off. This place gives me the creeps, everything's so tidy and clean, like one of those pre-war postcards, and it just, just feels unnatural. All locals are too friendly and seem to have no idea what it's like to live out in the wasteland. It's unnerving, those fairies, those weird things have been following us the whole time we've been here, watching us with those glowing eyes. Hope they won't work the reason the kingdom would send us here, because I'll be darned if I have to look at those things ever again. We camped outside the town in order to avoid any issues with the locals, and I only brought a few men with me armed with pistols to show we don't mean any harm. Yet, nobody officially would come and meet us. From what we could gather, the mayor hadn't shown his face in ages, and any attempt to contact him was met with silence. I was about to call it there and head back to the camp when one of the fairy things came up to me and directed us to follow it. 
I refuse to say where we were going or who sent it, but we didn't have any other options to complete our objective here, so we followed it to a small house near the back of the town. When we arrived at the house, a fairy left, and a big screen turned on, showing the flickering image of a woman on it. The woman called herself Hope, and she said she wanted to help us. After questioning her, I learned that she was some sort of robot intelligence, and she has some involvement in the fairy program here in Pleasantdale. I don't fully trust her, but she has offered to lead us to some places with other pre-war tech we can bring back to the kingdom. If it means I get the job done, it means I'll see what she has to offer. Later on, Hope. And it looks like we're not doing so well here, which kind of really sucks. But if we don't do well, I mean, it was a good effort, you know. Good. Um, so, organizing insurgents. I don't want to hurt our special forces attack and defense. I mean, that helps us with our infantry and organization, but I prefer this one. It makes our infantry slightly better. Better capacity multiplier, which is very good. And ducal reforms. To become a proper army that makes the kingdom proud, we need to do more than simply determine whether to go with an insurgent or mercenary army. we got to begin to innovate. Yeah. Maybe we should have started raiding them when the other people started raiding too. So, that's my bad. But hey, I didn't know, you know. Well, we lost a raid. That sucks. Yorkton Revolt. Scattered reports are coming in from the Kingdom of Manitoba. It seems that Leif Yorkton, having long brooded over the Kingdom of Failures and recently sent it to become the Duke of Langenburg, has decided that the decadence and ineffectiveness of the Kingdom of Manitoba have plagued the Kingdom too long. He has declared a revolt and has ordered every patriotic citizen to join his cause. <clears throat> While this cuts off any potential supply shipments from Manitoba, it's not without benefits to us. We can use this opportunity to really prove our loyalty to the Crown. If we win the, back the winning side, they are sure to shower us with praises and rewards and be far more willing to send support our way. We might also be able to supply weapons and equipment to one of both sides, nothing like a quick war for a quick buck. However, we must also exercise caution. Backing the wrong side in the Civil War could have disastrous consequences. It's unlikely the victory would look too kindly on us. How will this affect the economy? We won't be able to request supply shipments. Okay, watch for Yorkton. Well, you know what? We have high legitimacy anyways. Request a massive shipment. Oh, darn it. Well, okay. Uh, tensions in the Kingdom of Manitoba finally boiled over and Yorkton has risen in revolt. Fortune is a good opportunity for us to profit. Nice. Ooh, that helps us with production, producing more infantry equipment and another arms workshop, which is very good too. Oh, you get two here though. It's crucial to have a reliable supply of weapons at the waste and that's something that we simply don't have. Absolutely. Onward to manifest our destiny. Operation Pleasant Day, Commander's Log, Entry 6. Hope has led us to yet another pre-war location with some fancy tech. I have to admit, despite my apprehension and trusting her, she has been extremely useful. This has been the fourth location she has led us to. Filled with enough supplies to keep us stocked and to bring back home as well as with the tech within. The kingdom should be happy, and that means we get paid another successful job completed by the Wasteland Dogs. Though I must confess, some of the tech Hope has brought to us seems to be a little bit less than useful. Uh, automatic coffee makers, ooh, robot floor sweepers, hands-off mustache groomers, it all seems a bit old-world luxury, though I guess the kingdom's elite would take a like liking to them. So I was hoping to find something we could use against the Republic. Help the boss win the war without a bunch of us dying. Maybe we can strip, uh, strap more blades to the automatic lawnmower. I asked Hope. Using that modified pit boy she gave me back in Pleasant Dale, if, uh, if she could take something a bit more substantial. Or take us to something a bit more substantial. She said there was one final place we can scavenge something really big from before the war. She called it Manifest North, a huge pre-war experiment that would change society forever. I see no reason to doubt her claims now. We shall go to Manifest. Cool. Oh, can we just lose the war now? And we lost. Dang it. Stalemate. We like, oh, yeah, saw a small amount of legitimacy. This was as, as bad as I thought. The raid has carried us on to an inconclusive end. Well, we haven't managed to loot their territory, nor they haven't managed to drive off our soldiers. <clears throat> Instead, the combat has simply ended. Uh, well, with a disappointing result, at least this shows the kingdom that we're still capable of fighting Republican scum. Not great, but not terrible. Yeah, pretty much. The heart of the monster. What is this place? Well, a lot of the pit boy illuminated the ruined sandwich in the wall. It's meaning uh, indecipherable and loss of time. The commander looked around in the room, a, so a lobby of sorts, while his men searched around for anything useful. A cheery voice pop responded from the pit boy. Oh, there's stuff here too. We could do. Huh. There's a location manifest that shall help care for humanity, allowing it to prosper. The commander sighed, and that's all the AI had to say in the last three times he asked for. Never mind, he thought. The building was huge and looked scientific. Probably a bunch of supplies they could take back to the kingdom and finally end this expedition. It had gone on much longer than anticipated, but the hall had been good. He was about to call out to his men when Hope began speaking again. Please head into the lower chamber of the facility with your men. All of you will, need, all of you will be needed. The commander looked down at the device on his wrist, confused at the sudden request, but Hope had led them true so far and had no reason to doubt her instruction. Calling out his troops, he made their, they made their way back down the dark stairwell, later with debris and dark stains. The lights were shortened out, or shorted out, but a dim light was emanating from a doorway below. As they entered the room, they saw enclosed pods with tubes flowing out of them, dozens of them in a grid pattern. 
Some appeared to be broken with a dark stain leading them into the vents and holes. The troops murmured uneasily, Hope began to speak. Please connect me to the terminal commander. He was unsure, but his instinct told him that this room was dangerous, but he reasoned that nothing could get the drop on them in this enclosed space. They connected the Pip-Boy into the terminal and watched as it flickered alive and began showing a steady stream of code. A voice then echoed around the room as glass screens ro rose up and separated the commander from his troops. Manifest online for the good of mankind. Please enter the pods and resume the experiment immediately. The troops banged on the glass in an attempt to free themselves, but the tempered screens merely reflected their blows. The voice repeated its demands as the unbroken pods opened to reveal the atrophied and mutated remains of the people inside. The troops began to panic as the bodies inside of the pods began to stir and move, all while manifest but repeated its demands. The commander turned to the pet boy. Hope, what is this? Shut it down now. The experiment must be complete. Manifest will provide and care for all of humanity. No longer will humanity have to work or struggle. Manifest will provide. The commander desperately looked at the terminal in an attempt to find a way to stop the awakened AI. The stream of code, uh, cycling, was endless, cycling far too fast to read or alter. The trapped soldiers panicked more, some firing at the mutated creatures, while others fought off robot arms attempting to place them into the pods. The experiment must be complete. Manifest will provide. Manifest will provide. The troops began to scream in terror while the voice of Manifest continued to vibrate around the chamber. The commander hes had hesitated long enough, tearing out the pit boy cable. He unloaded his weapon into the terminal, ignoring the protesting cries of hope. The voice of Manifest began to slur and stutter, the lights in the room flickering and sparking. The grass... The glass screens began to slide down, allowing the troops to free themselves and kill the last of the mutated creatures. Fleeing from the building, Hope spoke once again with more rage than the commander thought possible for a machine. Why, a manifest would have saved humanity, protected it at all times, you would have been happy and cared for. Why ruin the experiment after centuries of planning and waiting? Why? The commander ignored her cries, undoing the straps on his wrist, and let the pit boy fall to the floor. As they left the building, all that could be heard was Hope's cries of anguish. Let's go home. Jesus Christ. Alright, so we gotta figure out what we're gonna do here. Do we help them? Fight them or do be neutral. Offer our aid to York in exchange for equipment. Throwing her hat in the ring. Manifest gratitude. Aid the king. <clears throat> king of Manitoba. Commit to the fight. The king's generosity. The game was rigged from the start. Sweet victory. That's embarrassing. Nothing ventured. Or just wait and watch. Civil War profiteering. Bottle caps, political power, lose manpower. Huh. Seize the window of opportunity. Um, I mean, technically, we don't want to help out them. I mean, up is not, that's pretty cool. Joins the kingdom of Manitoba. Because it doesn't matter. In the end, someone's going to become Manitoba. We could just, like, sit here and wait and watch. I wouldn't mind sending volunteers, if truth be told, though. Get stability on this side. You get 10% war support and a double reduction for that. Well, so far, what's going on? So, uh, the duchy is losing, it looks like, a little bit. I wouldn't mind being neutral, though, in all honesty. Hmm. Kingdom could easily win. Because I remember playing this before. Duchy was a little more difficult. Oh yeah, the Kingdom of Manitoba probably has more divisions anyways. Um, Merx again. Honestly, nothing ventured, nothing gained. The game was rigged from the start. If we aid the king, you get bonus for industry and stability. We aid these guys, we get more war support. And the double bonus for land auction. And more war support. That's a lot of war support. Because I want to go to war myself. Um, hmm, Civil War. We could aid the king. We could do that. Well, the king remains a king whether or not York appreciates the fact. We remain in steadfast and loaded at the crown of Manitoba and surely they'll win us a day. I hope this doesn't hurt us later on. Has not completed the focus. Declare the duchy restored. Okay. You can backstab him later. Now, as much as I want the other one, we could aid the king, maybe. Constitutional supremacy. Many of the citizens of our kingdom are, are happy that we've chosen the side of the king. While there's chaos over the lake, we're an island of calm in the storm. Offer support accepted. We have received word of the kingdom of Manitoba, whom we offer to support, too. Uh, they made the wise choice to accept our offer support and shipment of weapons from them as payment is arriving shortly. We can begin on selling our own equipment and soldiers to the Kingdom of Manitoba, making a profit while also ensuring that our preferred candidate wins. Today is a good day for the business in Arbor. 
Two chairs for soon to be victors. Help my a little bit. All the king's men, before we can commit soldiers to the cause, we can uh, we can begin by sending advisors and attaches to watch the revolt and give their sincere advice. With their aid, they're sure to win in no time. Commit to the fight. One cannot remain on the sidelines of such a conflict forever. Sending our soldiers to fight for the Manitoba will reaffirm our commitment to the kingdom and ensure they bring a swift end to this unseemly revolt. Good. Oh no, we can't help you out. But we're on your side. Um, the king's generosity, while beating those villainous traitors, is its own reward. You can never have too many rewards. Begin weapons development. It's crucial to have a reliable supply of weapons of the West End, and that's something we simply just don't have right now. Happy January, everybody. Oh, they get pushed in now. That's not good. Well, let them continue attacking us. Should be able to win here. The damage seem pretty actually strong. <laughs> Stronger than I thought than I anticipated. Oh, Royal Reward. Lord of the King during his time of need has not gone unnoticed. Oh god. They're starting to lose now. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're to be rewarded for our efforts. Gun the second and his advisors have no proposed several options for how we may be rewarded. One option is to grant trappers the rights to come to our territories and hunt for, for furs. In exchange for this privilege, the taxes collected from these trappers will be given to us, which could significantly boost our economy. This option is the potential to create a new industry within our territory, providing jobs and opportunities for our people. The other options for the kingdom are to bestow upon us a ceremony gift of resources. The specifics of this gift are still being discussed, but the ceremony and tradition inherent in the bestowment will be appreciated by many monarchists within our territory. This gift will likely be significant, of significant symbolic value and can serve as a tangible representation of our loyalty to the king. Uh, oh, look at this. Civil War profiteering. Before making a decision, we should carefully uh, consider the p potential benefits and drawbacks of each option. Trapping or granting trappers the right to hunt within their territories could lead to increased competition for resources and potential conflicts with local trappers. On the other hand, a ceremonial gift may not have the immediate economic benefits, but could bolster our reputation and strengthen our ties with the kingdom. Stability and water versus a city. Well, we can always get more water, honestly. That's not great. I like the stability, but... We could probably use that city now. Mm -hmm. Expand weapons production, maybe? Oh, this will help us with research speed, infantry equipment, research speed, more reliability. Um, so, really, that would be good to do. Ducal reforms. Oh, need more caps. Uh, support equipment. Aid. Forge blues. Aid from the kingdom would be nice. Uh, Ducal reforms. Where have to be peace for this one? Well, expand the weapons production. We need to develop more effective and better weapons production development techniques. That won't help much if we don't have the facilities to implement new techniques. That does not help us at all with sword efficiency. What the heck? You better hold. Oh, you expanded in Boggy Creek at least. Well, I mean, we're busy ourselves right here, so. We've lost none. Where's the 102? That's not bad, actually. So, what is this? Hire out mercenaries. Lose a little bit of manpower. Uh, we'll send 100 soldiers to the market and allow them to be hired, bringing the total market to 100. If the soldiers are not hired, we'll regain the manpower once the war ends. If they are hired, we'll regain half the manpower. Hire out of mercenary company. Who weapons in the market? <clears throat> Some infantry equipment. Uh, do we have any infantry equipment? Oh, we got plenty. We put that one. Put lots of weapons in the market. Do that one too. Put great loads of weapons in the market. 250. Spec ops equipment. Offer military expertise. Prepare our training advisor. So the training advisor to the market allow them to be bought. Uh, bring the market to the one. Or gain it. Go ahead. Let's try that one. War propaganda would be nice too. Not try command, local sheriff, begin weapons development, yeah. Uh, bring our civilization, just how Rogos Town's planning to be max planning. You know, I'm gonna go with Jeffrey Wilcox. Maybe more max planning would be nice. But we're at war two. It will we'll look army first. So because of this guy, I'm going to make sure he goes uh, inspirational and effort. really want to maximize those guys out. Fair weapons production, yeah. We have to. That's good, that's good, that's good. Nice. Orgy, nice. Now that helps out. We're better recovery, more HP. It's going to be more soft attack. Oh, yeah. Capture more equipment ratio, too. That'd be fantastic. Hey, they're actually pushing out. Okay, good. Okay, they're doing better. Oh, God. Let's give me like that, guys. 
We've lost none versus 256, which is good. Recon is actually helping us out quite a bit, which I like. A little more manpower just in case. Um, anything else here? What else can we do? Repair, repair training advisor? You know what? Go ahead. Gave us 250 more guns, which is good. Expanded weapons production is good. Our uh, weapons confiscation. Four tall blues. Uh, the foretold of Gimli exists on a southern border alongside three rivers, and our spies have reported that the two nations are on friendly terms. If we demand weapons from Gimli, we will not only help ourselves, but potentially weaken our enemies, too. That'd be great. Oh, they're pushing in, too. What sort of map do these guys have? Do they have some ports? Oh, they're mobilizing more. Oh, they're definitely trying against us. Resist or higher than our. Good, good, good. Up there. Oh, 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 that's not good. That's really not good. Oh boy. Oh boy. You better freaking hold out, boy. Weapons up for sale, 50. Come on, we're winning our war. Why can't you win yours? Um, reverse engineer weapons. They have pulling apart weapons that Manitoba's given us. We can learn how they work and get better at developing our own weapons. War has come. How about mercenary reinforcements? We simply need more men. In our current state, it's unlikely that we'll be able to hold out three rivers, even with assistance from Manitoba. We need to hire some mercs, expand our army, and prepare it. Yeah, pretty much. Oh god, now you're really losing. Yes, we're absolutely going to need some dynamite. Um, can you go here, maybe? Start striking out. For oh, hello. Oh, are they also at war with someone else too now? Oh, they're ra being raided. Oh, that's good. You know what? You let him leave, go here. Should easily be able to get that tile. Good. And we've gotten there, right? Yay! I just march. Go. Go. Get these guys in place. Just go. Can we make an encirclement? That'd be nice. Oh god. Yeah, they're trying to push back. That's good. Let's see at least. Okay, this is good for making money though. Can I buy more guns yet? Next you want to get the next level too. I buy a lot of those weapons on the market. Oh yeah. Good. Um, well, let's do this one next. Equipment capture ratio gets worse, but whatever. Hey, another division. Oh, another two divisions. Oh yes, please. They're not great, but they are what they are. <coughs> Excuse me. No, you guys keep these guys in place. Go this way. Oh, you're getting attacked. Oh, this is going to not be pretty good for us. You better move faster than this boy. You guys just found something? Okay, air attack. That was not what I was expecting. Oh, we got this. Oh, dang it. Hold on. So we got a hold here. Reinforce the defense. You're going to push through here as fast as best you can. Uh, put weapons in the market. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Once we win here, we can free these guys. It'll be fine. Probably. You're not gonna let them reinforce, no sir. It's good. And we have freedom. Woo! And we made an assignment ourselves. Help destroy the division. Help move here. And we'll start splitting up these guys too. Oh, they're definitely losing now. God dang it. Hmm. You start moving forward north. Grand Rapids Dam, huh? <clears throat> Early prototypes. While well, we began experimenting with our own weapons, the best way to test them is to do field testing. <coughs> there we go. 
We're at war ourselves, but we're still doing some field testing. Love it. Get these guys in place. Don't let them move. Nice. Easterville, yes please. Oh, would you look at that. Now we need Rock Ridge. It's pretty costly doing it like this, but it's alright. Siege Hidden Valley. Good. 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 Dynamite's good. I want more recovery rate for soldiers, too. God dang it. Kingdom Manitoba, we'll do better. Catching up. Well, let's do new experts. Developing an arms industry is simply as a matter of setting up facilities to build weapons. It's to train the artisans and engineers on how to create them. Makes sense. Good. Or old naval targeting. Just because we definitely needed that. Yeah, totally. The faster you do that, the better. Improvising obstructions and ancient tactics. Yes, please. Good. How much more do we need? We lost 86 versus 1,000. So we once are down here, we move up through here. Unfortunately, they sell this tile too, which sucks. Get some goods. Research speed. Mail hacker's good. Um, cult of personality. Be a smooth talker. Smoothly talk to us. Oh, they're attacking here too. I like it. Good, we got him. Okay. God dang it. Do we have to do your wars for you? Four divisions. Wow. Um. Should go commanders. Honestly, just take him. Fire oh, someone new. Lone wolf? Okay, not a lone wolf. Nathan Mosby. There we go. <laughs> nice. Nope. Wrong. At least we can see what's going on here now, finally. Oh, god awful they're doing. Tools are good. What else we got here? A lot of time. Don't really want to do that one yet. We'll only need that one done too. New experts are nice. Catching up. Our board exam industry is not only small, but also lags behind that of other countries. We need to do the best we can to catch up. Absolutely. Followed up with what? Rapid production. Only by rapidly pushing out whatever we can will we be able to catch up to our peers. Fortunately, our efforts have brought enthusiasm to our workers for the moment at least and putting our best foot forward. Now that we control the land firmly belonging to the dam, we can should invite representatives of Manitoba to prove how effective we are governing new territories. We're making sure they see the best our work has to offer, we're sure to increase our position in the eyes of the kingdom and the land bleeds Montana. Monarchism never really left the former Duchy of Ongers. Even among the lands of the damned, there are plenty of monarchists who are waiting for the chance to reappear and claim their, their former duchy. This has made integrating new lands into the domain surprisingly easy. And here we are, everybody. The kingdom of Manitoba is doing better, of course, with us helping, helping them out. I've converted all of our divisions that we've sent over to... Uh, Spec Ops Divisions, which are very nice. And, uh, yeah, we're doing alright. We're definitely doing alright. So, please don't move. Please don't move. Please don't move. Please don't move. We're running out of manpower, but what else is new? Oh, I guess you can't go up there. Whatever. Um, let's see. Manpower hired by war participants, 200. Um, resources, put weapons on the market. We don't have a ton of resources left, so, yeah. But buy our stuff. Prepare a training advisor. I really don't want to lose any more army because we honestly could use it. We just did weapons confiscations, though. Uh, despite a bit of a requisitioning from the locals, many still have weapons. Weapons that they surely don't need if they trust us to protect them. After all, if, they've, if we've got guns, why do they need them? And supervised production. We're watching over our facilities and supervising the construction of new facilities. We'll be able to ensure our workers are doing whatever they can do to do their best. Fantastic. So now we're going to slowly start crushing them like this. I like doing it circumvent, but this just makes it easier and better for everybody else here. Uh, Civil War profiteering. Send out some men with prospectors. That'd be good. <clears throat> as much as I love the money, 
it's not really a ton of money that we do get. So, so that would be nice. Uh, special forces, that wouldn't be bad. Combat experience gain. I would like to get down here though, but still. Of course, this will make it slightly cheaper. Alright, make it slightly cheaper for us. I'm not using them immediately, we'll see. If they go to outside of battalions, we're going to need more manpower too, so we got to raise up a conscription level to at least funded militias. That would be nice. Supervised production, land, sea, sky. That's all right. Uh, Monarchists rise up. Lands of three rivers are still filled. Look at that. Uh, with discontentment and minor insurgencies. But making it clear we'll shelter these rebels and allow them to continue fighting three rivers. Uh, we'll gain souls, loyal, soldiers loyal to the cause. All right, we'll do this. That's good. That's good. Just start here. Uh, go here and do that. Go here and do that. And Manitoba is doing way, way, way better, so... By encircling and helping them encircle some divisions, we pretty much guarantee them that they're going to win the war. Now, if we decided to fight Manitoba instead, well, that would have been very much more different. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Should be able to win here. They might be able to pierce through us, but, you know, whatever. James Rammer. Oh, sweet victory. Look at that. <clears throat> the recent revolt in Europe has come to an end, and we are fortunate enough to have supported the winning side. Our contributions played a significant role in the victory, and we've been receiving numerous delegations from victors expressing the gratitude for support, our support in the war. And we need this one too. The victors assured us of our status and prominence in the new Manitoban society that is developing, recognizing the significant contributions that we've made towards our success. Our territory has become an important topic of discussion, even in the highest circles of the kingdom cementing our position as a key player in regional politics. The impact of our support in the war has been significant, and with the victors recognizing our contributions as viable and essential to their success. As a result, we've gained considerable influence in the new society that is developing, um, with many seeking our advice and guidance on matters of governance and politics. This newfound prominence has been a source of pride for us, and we've already begun to see the benefits of our support in the war. We must now work to ensure that we continue to maintain our position and influence in the new society, and we leverage our newfound status to secure the best possible outcomes for our people in the territory. It feels good. Three cheers for the victors. More stability? Great. Large amount of legitimacy, which means we can spend a large amount of legitimacy. Threat in three rivers. Um, that's our expedition. I wouldn't mind doing that one again. Massive supply, moderate amount, moderate amount. Extend our backup to extremely high. Yeah, so whatever weapons we need, because my god, did we give them a lot of stuff, did we not? Which is good overall. <clears throat> Monarchus rise up. Manitoban soldiers. In recognition of our efforts so far, uh, Manitoba has seen fit to uh, send us a detachment of soldiers. Uh, Led by capable generals trained to deal with the logistical problems and ready to help us. Yes, please. Loyalists. Wow, they are, huh. Brandon's fanatics. Six combat width. Not ideal. Infantry, please, only. There you go. Ghoul hordes, a small group of wayside dogs, have returned early from the expedition, missing a lot of no their number, but still having most of the supplies from what we can piece together from their survivors. They were uh, setting up a camp inside an old pre-war building from the, in a section of the floor collapsed, leading to an old survival bunker. The noise awakened by a feral ghoul horde located in the bunker, who swarmed the camp and killed most of the group. A few managed to escape, hiding with while the horde flooded out and dispersed into the town. Before gathering the supplies and heading home, it's going to take a while to get the manpower to send another expedition. Feral ghouls, god dang it, dirty ferals. Oh, God, that's terrible. Go and do that, that's fine. Just in case, we're going to mobilize a little bit more. White legs. Uh -huh. Aid from the kingdom. Uh, in recognition of our efforts, the kingdom of Manitoba dispatched several advisors to our kingdom to aid us in our more pressing concerns, and then something to celebrate. Now that we've unified the former Duchy of Angers, now seems like the perfect time to celebrate, and what better way to celebrate than to kill the last of these darn damned? Yeah, might as well. General Frevers. And with this, we're going to raise this up. It's going to take more supplies from us, but whatever. We've got it. Now we're making demo equipment, anti-tank, all this good stuff. Okay, come on. Don't get eaten. I mean, that should go without saying. Please don't get eaten. 28. Not really. 28.44. Plus 6. Uh, that. That'd be nice. And that's decent weaponry, too, so. Economic advisors. Captain of industry. Honestly, when we hit, I want to hit him hard. I might just go with Surgeon. So get more soft attack, better production costs. I think that's the way to go. 
But some to celebrate. Hell is filled with those who are damned. Let's see what this one says. O'Brien looked down to the valley through the, his binoculars, observing. The corner raiders prepare and build defenses to keep his forces out. Uh, they're back to the giant stone wall of a pre-war dam. It had been a hard enough campaign to push a dam out of the north, but taking up these raider guys felt good to him. His men m milled around behind him, anticipating what was to come. A radio buzzed on to life on his belt. It was time. He picked up the radio and brought it to his face to drown the rats. At a moment's notice, shattered by a series of explosions running up the dam's surface, rubble rained down on the raiders, sending them scrambling for cover as a monument to the old world collapsed under the weight of the river behind it. Even from his position high above the valley, O'Brien could hear the crashing sound of the waters that swept through the damned camp, sending stone and bodies tumbling away as the river reasserted itself. Before long, it was over. No sign of the camp or raiders left in the flowing blue waters. O'Brien turned to face his troops before firing a shot in the air. Double rations for everybody! The soldiers cheered and the celebrations began. Hey, more legitimacy. Uh, we have 90%. Need more political power now, dang it. Uh, maybe we can wait for that, perhaps? Yeah? Because we get, what, 2.65? 4? Yeah, something like that. To dream. O'Brien read the latest report that had been delivered to him, leaning back in his chair with his boots on the desk. New recruits, production reports, scouting findings, and what really caught his eye, tax reports. He let a low whistle as he saw the total number of caps the locals were bringing in, exponentially higher than his own paycheck. The kingdom was certainly going to love these numbers. He tosses the paper aside and leans back a bit more, his hands behind his head. He was living his life. The life. Probably the best job he'd ever taken in his career. Shame it has to end. O'Brien frowned slightly at the thought of his contract ending. What to do then? The kingdom probably won't have much use for him after that, and although he was loath to admit it, he was getting on in life. He stared up at the ceiling, a new thought entering his mind. He could just take the land for himself. It's not like the kingdom would have the means to stop him. He let the thought stew for a bit. Maybe. Maybe. He stares at the ceiling for the rest of, his, the, rest of the night. Huh. Paranoid. Nice. Cruelty to others. More resistance to our get. Uh, better, co better compliance, growth speed in our states occupy the enemy, which is good for us, and resistance activity chance goes down. Ooh, more political power. Let's consume goods a little bit, and more stability. Generous rewards, and kindness to our own. But generously rewarding those who serve us well, we can ensure that the state functions effect effectively. So we may call this corruption, we call it greasing the wheels of effective governance. Yeah, why not? Oh, we go straight to war with them, too, with that one. Uh, distance ourselves from the monarchy. There's a large amount of uh, political power and legitimacy and whatnot. We become elites. And defense threatened. We lose even more political power. Get more weekly manpower, though, maybe. O'Brien rules, etc. Volt. O'Brien's greatest failure? Well, after the apocalypse, it doesn't mean we should really have these guys, but that's fine. Republic of Three Rivers. Monarchist Revolution. Cruel War Measures. Victory for the Junta. Yeah, maybe that would be bad. Cruelty to others. Unfortunately, not everyone likes or accepts our presence when we swoop in to save them. Cruel punishments will be necessary to teach them to keep our, their heads bowed. And, uh, up to snuff. We finally managed to develop our own weapons industry to the point where we're not simply putting guns together with twigs and mud. Yeah, that'd be pretty good, probably. Yeah, that definitely helps us out. It hurts our equipment capture ratio modifier, but honestly, I'm okay with that. Because we definitely need to be up to snuff. Nice. Fantastic. Wedge formation, more breakthrough and initiative, yeah. Even better planes, too. I like it. Eventually, we do need to make sure that it's all of infrastructure and whatnot, too. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. They invent for me again. Mm, pretty normal. And Mineral Prospectors, Bottle Caps Economy. Still doing military sending ba uh, bonuses, whatever. Uh, our guys are not fantastic, but they're decent. Or without on it too much more. New nobility. Uh, I just want to make sure these guys are just like, fantastic. Eight. 18, good. Very good. We need way more equipment for them, though. Yeah, that killed our spec ops equipment. What is this? Follows are established, don't really care. Play working is good. Grab that one, too. Nice. Uh, works of arts. Well, how about we do aid from the kingdom? War was calm. Manitoba's a war with the Republic of Three Rivers, and we're not properly prepared. That's not so. Completely focus on something to celebrate. Oh! Manitoba and Three Rivers are now at war far sooner than we expected. We need to quickly get ourselves sorted out and join this war lest Manitoba wins without us and refuses to pay us. O'Brien's redemption. Oh, look at that. Except for O'Brien and the rest of our little gang to redeem ourselves. We lost war with the Three Rivers before, but this time it won't happen again. Bulk weapons buyouts. 
Things still aren't perfect for us on the supply front. When you can certainly use whatever weapons we can get just by throwing money around, I'm sure weapons will appear. Well, just stash themselves, whatever. Uh, there you go. You know, if they're here, we're going to use them. Do we need water? Do we need support equipment? Water is good. Support equipment is honestly not good enough. Uh, you know, reform doctrine? Reform unit doctrine, maybe. A proper, well-functioning army is not simply a bunch of guys with weapons. The best armies integrate local logistical companies, field hospitals, and demolition teams and more. We should look into integrating support companies and reforming our doctrine. Good idea. Ah, logistics manager. Yeah. Yeah, is this gun being held together with mud? Look, O'Brien, things, with things they are, as they are, I'm surprised my guys managed to last as long. Learn and tell her not the hero. Some people say honor is no place in the frozen wastelands of the far north. Those people are the ones who became raiders and rebels. Oh, yeah. Go ahead of time there still. It's fine. They're unique, so I do want to grab them both. As much as I always like these ones, I mean, and this is, this is pretty good, too. Destruction of Mount Rushmore. Oh, look at this. Oh. Huh. New weaponry experiments. As, as well as support equipment, new and specialized weapons can help make our soldiers immensely. We should begin experimenting with these sorts of weapons immediately. And then we'll go down and do cruelty to others. Yeah. Cold World Blues. Let's send an expedition. I'm not sure what we can do with a raid against these guys, but, you know, it is what it is. What do we got here? Demo equipment? I don't know what to combo with, but giving them some demo teams would be good. Our uh, cam companies, absolutely. Expedition departs. Well, let's see what happens. 0% chance of welcome to the most pleasant of lands, yeah. Support equipment, motorized, anti tank, good. New weapon and schematics are good. And to the north. Make it so easy to go to war with us if they really wanted to, but whatever. Uh, reinforce the nobility. We're promising battlefield promotions to the nobility. We can make sure the most promising soldiers become mercenaries. Let's not only help the core of our army highly skilled, keep the core of our army highly skilled, but also encourage soldiers to achieve the best of their ability. That's good too. Absolutely. Grab this one. Common builds are pretty nice. That's good. How much should we get a day? 1.72 is not bad. Cruelty to others. What am I keep going down here? But what's our training? Go to one two. O'Brien's greatest failure. Uh, it's time to return to the Three Rivers. O'Brien and the rest of our army were humiliated there, so it's time to make things right. Are we going to do turning robots into slag? As well as more fleshy targets, there are plenty of robots in the violent Canadian wasteland. We need to be ready to handle whatever comes across. Oh. Distance ourselves from the monarchy. Oh, we have to do this one first. Huh. The monarchy in Manitoba has proven itself to be imperfect as ruler. Sure, if they were infallible, we well, wouldn't have to ever be here in the first place. And now that he thinks about it, O'Brien really would like to have his own kingdom. Ew. We don't get weekly manpower, do we? No, we don't. So that kind of hurts us. Well, we'll see, I guess. So help us out a little bit more. Cruel, crush monarchist resistance. For some reason, there's still plenty of insurgents who don't like a radical independence movement. They still have to be dealt with in one way or another. Land, sea, sky. Someone scoff at our ambitions of building an air force or navy or in a frozen little country. But we'll be the ones that are laughing when our plans are flying overhead and boats sailing off the coast. Yeah, that'd be good. Final leader for the party. I always like doing that one. That's always good. Um, let's crush monarchist resistance first. It doesn't hurt us as bad. Still hurts us, but still. There you go. Wedge formations. That'll be good to get done. More breakthrough, more initiative. Uh, can cane formations. Better infantry combat with. Walking infantry get more breakthrough, soft attack, hard attack, and better division attrition, which is still very good too. Uh, walking infantry does that include special forces? It does not. Which sucks, but whatever. Anti tank. Oh, absolutely. Electro deadlock. That's fine. We don't really care. Arborg. Yes, please. That plans on our guys too is fantastic. Binder kit's good. Better basic weaponry, yes. Load by one for now. Better train doggos. 
Uh, go with two, crush Monarchist Resistance, go to war with them. Yeah, might as well. Go ahead and stop doing that. They'll probably start attacking us like crazy. It's fine with me. Or we might be able to win it very easily. I don't know. Independent Industry. Well, great strides have been taken already to make ourselves independent of Manitoba, we need to make sure that claiming independence will not negatively impact the economy. A healthy economy means a healthy country, after all. Yeah. That makes too much sense. Motorized, anti-tank, fighters. Makes sense. Yeah. Hey, what do they find? Yeah, recruit cost for air doctrine. Cool. More stability would be good, too. Look at who they have here. The old believers as well. Oh, boy. Well, if that's the case, you know what? We're going to buff up the script just a tiny bit more. What a combined arms. More initiative. 2%. So we'll go with infantry and replace it with combined arms. It looks worse overall. I'm not sure why you'd ever use combined arms. But maybe that's just me. Looks like we're going to need to mobilize them even more now. Yeah. So if we do that, does it, can we actually like withstand their attacks at all? You can do this to help support this group out here. Maybe not. Yeah, it looks like they're still doing very well against us, so. We might go back to the drawing board and uh, not go to war with them just yet. We've got a couple things we could do up here, so. They're very strong, the Republic of Three Rivers, and they have the Old Believers helping them out, too. Which is not ideal. They don't have a lot of manpower, 10 to 20 divisions, but with these guys, they have up to 30, roughly. So, um, I might just end it there, yeah, and then we'll kind of go from there, you know. Um, we have independent industry inside a revolt. Now that we've almost ready to claim independence from Manitoba, well, there's only one that you left to deal with. Those who don't like us claiming independence by purposely inciting a revolt will flush these rats out. So, and appoint uh, knight captains. By appointing uh, knight captains among the soldiery, not only is Manitoba likely to approve old game or nobles who have something to owe us for. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, when we'll really try to strike against the kingdom or the republic of the three rivers. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of. Your day.